everyone and welcome to episode 32 of the Whatnot podcast. My name is Kathy. I am a disabled maker after a car accident in 2007 and this is a podcast all about the crafty things that I get up to. And today I've got the little heard of and little seen Ralphio here with me and Ralph hasn't been very well. He was whining last week a little bit and so we got him off to the vet and turns out he's got a bit of arthritis in his back and his hips. So he's just started on a course of painkillers and hopefully he'll be feeling much better soon. He already seems a bit better this week but he's a very good dog. He's very quiet He's never naughty. Siri's talking to me. He's never naughty. He's such a good boy. He's a good cuddler. And he always looks at you with love hard eyes. Don't you, Ralphie? But I will tell you that Buddy is circling below because, as you guys know, on my lap is his regular spot when I'm filming the podcast. And Ralph is quite happy sleeping under the desk. Aren't you, Ralphio? We got Ralph when he was three. He's a pet rescue. He was going to be put down. He had uh, some very serious dental work that had to be done. And the people who had him, and I'm definitely not judging, they were not in a position to pay the costs involved in having Ralph having his dental. So they took him down to have him put down. But luckily, uh, the vet decided not to do that and rung the pet rescue and they got him and then we got him. So we've had Ralph since he was three and he's 11 now. Ain't you, Ralphie? You're a very good boy. You are. We love you. So, yep, Ralph's on his painkillers. I'm feeling much better. Okay. And you go and hop in your usual spot, Ralph, yeah? I'll just make sure I put him down really gently because I don't want him to get a sore. Come around this side, buddy. Buddy's like going crazy. Yes, buddy's back in town. Buddy's 14. He's getting old, but he's a good boy. Is he 14 or 13? Something like that. We've had buddy since he was seven. Five. 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 Yeah, we got him when he was, well, mm -hmm. the agency told us he was five and then the lady that we picked him up from told us he was seven. So, yeah, anything in that range. You settle down, mate. All right, so that's the update on the dogs. Now, as usual, I've got a fair pile of stuff here. Um, it's funny. I said it to you guys before. At the end of each podcast, I think, well, I hope I'm going to have enough to talk about on the next podcast and then the next podcast comes around and I I'm start thinking, oh, maybe I should not show all my stuff. But anyway, we'll get stuck into it. There is a watercolour tutorial at the end of this podcast uh, and this week we are doing roses as was a request by one of the viewers. And hopefully this won't blow out too much, but... Um, I'll put a photo up of it, how it looks without it blowing out with the, the light and everything. But that's what we're going to be painting. So if you're interested in painting that, uh, check out the tutorial. I'll put a timestamp on the screen here when the tutorial starts. So we're going great with the tutorials and everybody's painting along. And yeah, so that's coming up. Now, uh, I've got two thank yous. Uh, I started off last episode because somebody had sent me some goodies and uh, somebody else sent me some goodies. And I just want to preface this by saying I do not need you to send me goodies. It's so lovely of you. I'm so grateful that you thought of me and are sending me some bits and pieces, but def definitely uh, that's not what I'm here for. I am just happy if you guys enjoy the podcast. But having said that, let's have a look at the goodies I got. 
Now, Jay has sent me these and uh, I think what's happened here is I've told you at the beginning of the year that when I make bits and pieces, I'm just randomly selecting people that comment on them on Instagram or here on YouTube and I send it to them because, like I said, I just like the process of making the bits and pieces. I can't keep everything that I make and if it brings you guys a little bit of joy and happiness, that's what I'm here for. But Jay... I sent Jay the little hand-painted fox that I had quite a few episodes, maybe three, four episodes ago now. Uh, so Jay left a lovely comment about it on Instagram and I sent the fox to him. And then he sent me this. So uh, Jay is a master crafter by the looks of it. If you have a look on his Instagram, I'll put his Instagram here. Uh his craft room setup is amazing but he's made some beautiful cards in here and they are so nice so professional this is the one that he sent to me with a note in it so super cute really nicely made they got a nice little uh, on the back here, it says a hug from a far card. Uh, and he made that in 2019. And this is nice because it's got like a, uh, a textured surface. And let me see. When you pull that little tab up, the toast pops out of the toaster. So that's pretty cute. Very, very clever. And then he sent a few packs along of ones that he's made. So nice. Sending wishes. May all your dreams come true. So that one with a nice little mouse at the bottom at the corner there. They're in um, cello bags and I'll, I'll leave them in the cello bags because I, I want to keep them nice. Happy birthday. Have a great day. Another one with the little mice. Really cute. Uh, this one says sending wishes for a, a very happy day and I like the texture in the background on the sky on that one it's really nice as well I'm trying to see I've got my glasses on to read and then I can't see the monitor old lady eye problems have a dandy day I like the um, yellow background on that one Thank you, Jay. These are lovely. You have done a beautiful job on them. This one with the nice little flowers. Really pretty. And the last one here is another one that says have a dandy day because it's got all the dandy lines on it. So they are going to be very handy. And then he sent this little guy. This reminds me of something that mum and my parents travelled to Portugal a few years ago and it reminds me of a rooster that they sent me from Portugal. So he will be going on my curio shelf at the back there. So that was cute. And he sent me two balls of yarn from Bendigo Wool Mills and this is in the colour lilac and it's like a, a little... It's got uh, like the little bubbles on it. So that'll be really nice. A, is it a brook? Brook uh, the, the bubble yarn. Uh, it is a mix of 80% mohair, 16% wool, 4% nylon. So, yep, pretty colour, and I'll be able to do something with those. So that's nice. And then there was a few other bits and pieces. He sent uh, some Bendigo Wool Mills cards, the, their latest colour releases. So that's that's very nice. And the last thing that he sent was a few sheets of these beautiful stamps, which I'm all about these stamps at the moment. And these are good for your journals and things like that. So this one's got like 
um, ice cream and watermelon and fudge sundaes and things like that on it. And of course, one with all the little birds, which I love so much. Little bird cage, little song notes. So thank you, Jay. You are super generous and I will get some good use out of all of these bits and pieces. So look at that little hedgehog there, quite cute. So yeah, very nice. Uh, so thank you, Jay, thanks so much. And I got another parcel in the mail because as you guys know, I sent my shawls down to Mill to do some photos for me. And when she sent them back, she sent me some of her newest stickers. So if you're interested in these, go and check Mill out. I'll link her Etsy shop down below, but she's put in a couple of pins. And that one's got the little yarn chicken and a butterfly, a little bit reflective, but I think you can see them there. And her latest stickers, so there's a teapot one, and this one says, sip, sip, knit, knit, knit one, sip one. On that one. And this is so cute. Little roundy that is Ariel the from the Disney. She's cute. And also a yarn chicken. So Mill is designing these. I've, I've mentioned it before. Um, she's always coming up with some new designs. These are the latest ones she's got. So that's her little yarn chicken chicken. And they're pretty reasonable price. They're high quality. So if you're interested in those, go and check Mill out. So thanks for those bits, guys. Thanks, Mill. So that's that. Now, the second thank you I have got is for, uh, just want to make sure I get names correct. And that is Pat. And she was the only person who let me know that on my last episode, I was telling you that I was wearing the ranunculus. Liar, wasn't. I was wearing the Zweig. So if you were searching for that pattern and thought it didn't quite look the same, that's why. I was wearing the Zweig. Which brings me to what I'm wearing this week. This is my love note that I originally knit. And this is knit out of a four ply and a mohair. And the four ply was BC Gun Yorkshire in purple. And I held that together with Willow and Lark Plume, uh, which is their mohair in the color Tea Dance. And uh, yep, I'm really happy with it. Uh, it's really comfortable. And for those that are in the know, uh, I will be hosting a knit along next month. Uh, mainly on Instagram. So if you uh, haven't checked that out, go go and have a look at my Instagram. Uh, I am doing a giveaway, which is a really nice little package. I'll put a picture of it in here. Uh, I've had a mug custom made uh, for the prize. So somebody will be selected at random. I have got mine all ready to go. I'm meeting up with the uh, coffee ladies on Saturday the 29th. And we are all going to be casting on. I've got mine all ready. I'll show you the colours that I am going to be using. I've already balled them up. I've got this beautiful blue. I'm going to knit mine in an eight ply this time. This is uh, the Yarn Collective. And the colour is called Surf. So it's the Yarn Collective Bloomsbury DK. It is a merino wool. And yeah, I'm going to knit my love note out of that. So I've got it all packaged up, ready to go. Uh, and I know that there's a few people on Instagram that are getting their yarn all ready to go. Uh, so yeah, that'll be fun. And the goal is to have it finished in four weeks. And I'll tell you, it's not a hard knit to finish in four weeks because it's knit on large needles. It's an open airy gauge. 
Um, it's You can make the, sheet, the sleeves short or long, as you can see. Mine are just probably three quarter, just below elbow length. I'll probably do something similar. So yeah, not really hard to knit this one up in four weeks. So go and check out my Instagram and join in the fun there. But that's more like my whips, not my finished objects. So back to my finished objects. I have finished my Deshane. Well, it's not my Deshane, it's for Mill. So it's all done. I, I haven't blocked it. I have woven in all the ends. I uh, did regular sleeves on it instead of the more open, loose sleeve. Uh, I, I kind of just did my own thing. Mill's got a, an Ursha that I knit her. So I got the measurements, like the, the width of the sleeve and things like that and the length off her and basically just mimicked that. The only thing that I did do is instead of a rib cuff, I did uh, very similar to what's on the bottom of the jumper. So there's a drop stitch row there and then I just finished off with a couple of pearl bump rows which is what's on the bottom of the jumper. The jumper in the pattern, it says to pick up and do a little border along the neck, but I haven't done that. I've just left it a la natural uh, because I think Mel will prefer that. And if she doesn't, if she would like, I'm going to send her the leftover wool. She can crochet a little chain neckline, line, uh, neckline on that, but I'm pretty sure she won't. I'm pretty sure she'll leave it. Um, it knit up really nice. I love the uh, yarn collective yarn. Gives you it's soft. It gives you good stitch definition. It's cold down in Victoria at the moment, so I think Mill's going to really appreciate this because it is um, an eight ply and a four ply held together. So uh, it's the Yarn Collective Bloomsbury DK in Russet held together with Cascade uh, 220 and I'll put the name of that on the screen there but it is quite a heavy jumper but I think look I think Mel's going to wear it to death she wears the other jumpers I've knit her like crazy she is extremely knit worthy and uh, I think she'll like this the only thing I will say is I did buy I had two balls in my stash and realized I'd need a couple more. So I bought them. They weren't from the same dye lot. And I don't know if you can see, but between the body and the sleeve there, there is a slight color variation. I mean, ever so slight. But I think if you have it sort of hanging down and you're wearing it, no one's gonna notice. And I know Mill will not care. So I'm very keen to pack that up off to Mill and send it off and move it on out of my craft room. And also, as I said, most of this yarn, apart from the extras I had to buy, were in from my stash. So, yeah, it's very nice to use yarn up from your stash. Dobby's just come in. I've given him um, a bone with one of those uh, marrow treats in it. So I'm hoping that'll keep him out of trouble. He hasn't, he's been very good. He's a good boy. So that was that finished object. And then I'm still getting to know my sewing machine. We're still kind of making friends. So um, I, I thought I'm just going to do a couple of smaller exercises on it just to familiarize myself with the stitches. And uh, there's a few new features on this machine that I didn't have on my old one that I'm just trying to like it's got a pivot it's got an automatic um, finish and start and uh, it, it cuts the, the the threads and there's a lot of stitches so I found this this was a pattern called uh, a tea mat and I got it off Etsy from a store here in Brisbane and it's called the Val Lead Designs and she, as I said, she's on Etsy. And look, don't look too closely. You, I'm not going to win any prizes for this, but I think it turned out pretty cute. 
Um, I just used a panel there in the front and then I cut all the pieces for around the edge. They're uh, one and a half inch blocks around the edge. The thing that I have trouble with is it doesn't seem to matter how neatly I cut out the squares when I and I, I really try to do the quarter of an inch uh, seam and everything when I go to put them together they never match up exactly is that a thing are they supposed to match up exactly because I have a lot of trouble with it and I cut all of these out and I got them all together but in some instances I kind of had to give it a little tug and a pull to make sure it it was right and then when I cut these three out they didn't fit they didn't fit at all so I cut them in half and to make it the right size I added this strip along the edge which I used my machine and I wrote tea time and there's probably a trick to this as well I mean the thing is I probably need to go and do a class or something like that I actually um embroidered that out on a piece of scrap material and then kind of lined it up where I wanted it to be on here and then re-stitched it on here but as you can see it's not centered I've got too much distance here just on this section here like it's not sitting and then not enough on this end so I'm wondering if there is a trick to working out where how to center your writing and things like that but um, I did hand stitch my little overlay at the back and I really liked that picture I'll give you a close-up of that it's a little girl patting a bird um, I've done a little bit of quilting on it yeah but yeah I think I'll have to make a few more of these little bits and pieces just to get the hang of it when I cut out the bags and things that I make, they normally fit quite well together. But when I get down to these fiddly little uh, squares and things like that, um, yeah, I'm not sure. So if you've got any tips or advice, if you do quilting or any um, online courses or YouTubes that you think that I could learn something from, I would be interested to know that. But yeah, that was a little finished object and... I liked fiddling around with it to try and make it work at, at the very least. And then last week I showed you my little box of shells that I got from my Etsy seller uh, and her name was C, what was it? It was Shell Rock Art. And uh, as you can see, I did not use all my shells, but uh, I've got all my bits and pieces there. There's some left over. What I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to take these on Sunday when I have coffee with the girls because Julie is going to meet us there, which is very nice. And she does a lot of this sort of thing. And I thought I might give them to her and see if she wants to see if she can, can come up with something else. But I've made two pictures and there's a little bit of a story to go with these. So I will show you the first picture so this is the first one that i made and as you can see i've used my stamps and things like that and done a bit of stenciling in the background there and as you can see i've given it a bit of a nautical theme and i found a little verse on um Google and so I've written that on and it says let your light shine so others can see their way out of the dark and that is a little quote by somebody called Timber Hawkeye but I was really happy with how they turned out these were some frames that I had in my stash and I took the glass out I've used a piece of my watercolor paper she gives you instructions on how to stick these shells down with a water resistant glue so I did all that and that was one and the other one that I did I've given more of a bluey purple background so selected out some of the shells I have put a little mermaid stamp from my stamps on the bottom there 
I was really happy with how they turned out. And they didn't take very long. I think they're effective. And, um, yeah, I've put a few little of uh, the half pearls on there as well. I don't know if you can – I'll give you a close-up look at that. There's a few little half pearls that I've put on there. Here's the mermaid there. And on the edge there, I've just written – Always be yourself. Unless you can be a mermaid, then always be a mermaid. So there's that. And what I thought I would do with these is I am going to host another cow next month. So that'll be the month of July. And if you recall in the episode where Susan joined us, she gave me two packs of mini minis that she dyed from her Beatrix Potter collection. So next month, I am going to do a knit along for my shawl pattern, the Friends I Like Flowers shawl. And I'm going to host one here on YouTube and one on Instagram. And somebody on YouTube will win one of these pictures and one of the bags of the mini skeins that Susan donated to the podcast. And the other picture will be on Instagram and I will put the other bag of minis that Susan donated to give away on Instagram. So that'll be coming up in July. So I thought I won't run two cows at the same time since we're doing the love note this coming month in June. But the following month in July, we I will do another uh, cow for the Friends I Like Flowers shawl. And they, these will be the prizes. So there's those two. So if you're interested in that, have a look at the pattern. I think it's still 15% off. And keep an eye out on Instagram for more details about that. And I will probably tell you a little bit more about it in the episode before, or next episode, before the following month, before July. So the last episode in June, I'll talk to you about it for the first episode in July. So, yeah, and then my other finished bits and pieces that I got done were some watercolours. Now, as I said at the beginning, there is a watercolour tutorial at the end of this episode for the roses. So before I filmed that episode, um, I was going through a process of painting the roses. I was trying to simplify the technique as much as I could uh, to make sure that whoever follows the tutorial will be successful with their painting. So because of that, I did paint a lot of roses this week and I didn't want to throw the paper away. So I made a little bookmark. So uh, I just painted that on um, a double piece and then I cut it in half and stuck the two pieces together and I've just run a little bit of lace around this side. I put a little sticker at the bottom there that says happiness and used one of my stamps on the front there. And that says have a blooming marvelous day. And on the back, I just did a little butterfly. So that was just a quick little thing that I fiddled around with this week in preparation for the tutorial. So that was that. And then I've been watching a lady on YouTube that does some beautiful paintings, and I'll link her down below. Um, I can't pronounce her name, but I will put it on the screen here. Uh, and she's been doing some lovely painting of cats. I'm not a big cat person. It's not because I don't like cats, but when... Uh, cats get near me, I get itchy, uh, I, if, I, if they scratch me, I flare up and it gets all red and everything. So I think I might be slightly allergic to them. Uh, yeah, so I'm not a big cat person to have one near me, but I do like cats. So I went a bit mad. So all the pictures that I'm going to be showing you today are of cats. 
Uh, and I just, but I've just been fiddling around with the technique that she shows and modifying it slightly to my own uh, style. So, uh, yeah, so these are the pictures. This was actually the picture of the day he, uh, Da Vinci I put up a cat and I thought, oh yeah, painting that because I'm into painting the cats at the moment. So this was on uh, Da Vinci Eye. I'll just turn the colour down a bit while I'm showing you the pictures so they stand out a little bit better. So I have bought some special paper for these because you have to have a smooth paper to get the the paint to run and flow to get the fluffiness of the fur. But yeah, this is the Da Vinci I one and I'll put the corresponding picture next to it. So painted that guy. And there was one I painted for Instagram. Uh, but as soon as I put it up, somebody asked me if they could buy it. So that's already been sent out. So there was that one. And then I thought, I'm going to try it on some cheaper paper. So this is my cheap knockabout everyday paper. So this was a, another cat that I painted. And it's very much in the style. I'll just get close if you have a look at the head area there. I just wanted to show you that uh, around the neck section, um, she teaches a technique where you use salt. So I put some salt on this to get the some of the texture. Uh, there's a, a, a technique called backwash, where once you've painted, while the paint's still wet, you drop water on it, and it gives you that effect that you can see just there where it sort of pushes the paint away and gives like a feathering sort of technique. So I will say that I probably went over the top with testing out some of these techniques and this cat looks a bit rustic, shall we say, but um, I'm really enjoying it. And as I said, putting my own spin on it, I like the, the squiggly lines and things. She doesn't do that sort of stuff. Uh, she doesn't do as much detail in the eyes. She's more a suggestive style painter. Uh, so I just do my own thing with that. But yeah, created that masterpiece. <laughs> so that cat. And the last one that I did was last night. It's funny because I always think the next one's going to be better. The next one's going to be better because that's what happens when you practice things. The next one is better. So this one, I I tried a, a, a new technique as well. Um, so this was a cat that I just found a silhouette on YouTube, uh, on Google. So I just outlined the cat with a, a grey lead pencil. I'll just put the colour back up. And in the videos that I'll link below of this lady that does the cats, she uses what's called masking fluid, which is quite well known in the watercolour community. And it's a gum that you put on your paper before you paint and it resists the paint so that when you peel it off, it's white. And I used that for the whiskers um, and just around the ears on this cat. You can see how the whiskers really stand out. So I have not had much experience using masking fluid, but uh, I think I made my lines a little bit thick, but you know, I'm still happy with that. So they're the three paintings that I've got to show you this week. And I'm really, actually I've got one more. You know, I said to you last week when I clear my desk off, I always feel like fiddling around with something. Um, I actually started to try and paint a cat. Didn't work out. So just kept painting. And this is what I ended up with. So it's a little meadow scene with the sun setting behind some hills and a whole heap of little flowers in the front there. Yep, just relaxing to do something like that. So, yeah, that kept me out of trouble this week. So, they're all my finished objects. 
and uh, I've only got one whip and one about to go on the needles which as I've already told you about is my love note so that'll be going on the needles and the only other whip that I've got is my pan uh, sweater that I showed you last fortnight and I thought I won't bother showing it to you again because nothing much has changed. I did finish the body so the body is finished so I've just got to put the sleeves on which I'm hoping to do in the next two weeks so I'll have that to show you in two weeks. The reason that it's not finished is because I've been madly working on the advent, the, the advent boxes that will be going out uh, later on this year and I'm pleased to report that I have got my pattern from my head onto paper and Julia and I are currently knitting it. Now, as would suggest, an advent is using the minis, uh, 24 minis. So far, I've knit eight. And the colours that I'm knitting it in are not the colours that are going to be in the advent. They are going to be a surprise. But toward the end of this year, I'll show you the advent pattern that I've come up with. Uh, I'll speak to Susan about that and get the timing right. Uh, but it will be exclusive to the advent boxes. And because of that, I was a bit concerned that people who uh, couldn't necessarily fit one of the advent boxes into their budget or uh, just couldn't access it for whatever reason were going to miss out on an advent. So I am thinking about doing another design in August, which will be released to everybody. So there might be a second second pattern for Advent coming up. So there's that. I've already started to kind of think about it. Uh, I want to get this one that I'm working on done and dusted. But uh, so far so good with the Advent box pattern. So I'm relieved to have that off my plate. Uh, and yeah, Julia and I are madly knitting it. So there's that. I just had to pause there because the postie went by and you all know what happens when the postie goes by. So things have quietened down again now, which is good. And we can move on. So the next bit that I'd like to speak to you about is my Revelry Revealed. And uh, I dug into my stash to have a look to see what I would pull out to show you guys this week and I pulled this out. So this is Rowan Felted Tweed. Put it in the middle there. Rowan Felted Tweed and it's in this absolutely beautiful colour and it is called Iris and it is colour 201 Iris and Although it's a little bit washed out on the screen, it is actually the colour of an iris. It's beautiful. That was why I chose it. I was actually went through a phase where I really liked that colour. And so, yeah, picked that up. Um, and the garment that I thought that I would knit out of this is called the Winter Escape by Carrie Bostick Hogue. And I really like it. Uh, I'm a big fan of a V-neck jumper. Uh, I like, uh, I don't know why, I just, I like a V-neck jumper. I've told you guys before, somebody told me a long time ago that when you're short, if you wear a V-neck, it makes you look taller. And even when I'm standing, I'm about five foot tall. And normally as I'm sitting in the chair, I look even shorter. So I'm all about the V-neck to even in my mind, to be visually a little bit taller. But I do like this. I think it's got some really classic details. I think that uh, this yarn would suit that jumper really well. Uh, it's got kind of that um, wintry vibe about it. So I, I'm a big fan of uh, that's, that look, the look of that jumper. Uh, and I would definitely be interested in using this yarn to knit that garment still. This yarn is, is like it says it's a, t a felted tweed, 
uh, which gives the impression that it's rustic, but it's not. It's really quite soft and uh, has almost an alpaca blend to it. I'll tell you what the blend is. It says, oh, it is made with merino wool and alpaca. So, as I say to my husband, I'm not often wrong. Well, I am, but I don't tell him that. Uh, yeah, so it is, they recommend three and a quarter to four mil needles, but it's, I think it's a, an eight ply. It's uh, made in Italy. So, yeah, very nice. 50% wool, 25% alpaca, and 25% viscose. And as you can see, it's got the little tweedy blips in it which don't stand out too much, but I think once it's knitted up, they'll, you'll be able to see them a lot easier. So, yeah, and I've thought about it after I spoke to you guys last fortnight. My big plan for next year is to churn through my stash. I was having a chat with Julia. We seem to both be knitting quite prolifically, mainly from our stash, and we're both in agreement that our stash doesn't look any different than it did at the beginning of the year. So my goal for next year is to have my stash looking significantly different than it does right now. And when I say different, I mean reduced. The thing is, I thought, even though I've got a lot of yarn in here, once I knit these things, I'm really just moving the yarn from my craft room up to my bedroom wardrobe. So there's that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, so I will knit that next year, hopefully. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm not quite sure. The Gamma wool hasn't arrived yet for the Gamma, so I'll I'll knit the Love Note, then I'll knit the Gamma. When I do the knit along for my shawl in July, I am not going to be knitting it again, uh, but I'll knit on other things. And as I say, I'm thinking about coming up with something else in the design department, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, after I've knit the Gamma, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll run a vote and see what people want me to knit. Uh, I'll I'll put up, say, three or four options and you guys can let me know which one you want to see me knit next. So, yeah, maybe I'll do something like that. So that's my revelry revealed. And the next section is my For Me, From Me. And about three days ago, I thought, I can't think of any. Like, what am I going to show on the For Me, From Me? And then I started getting my stuff together. Yeah, I've got a few things to show you in the For Me, From Me. Uh, so there's that. But if you don't normally stick around for that, that's fine. I've enjoyed your company. Uh, as I said, I've had a pretty quiet week, apart from Ralphie not being too well. Uh, but he's on the mend and my husband and I had a lovely week off. We did go and have some brunch and things like that. Uh, we didn't get much down, done around the house. We mainly just did our own thing. He likes to, um, he's got a car he's restoring. He likes to fiddle around with that uh, and a few other bits and pieces. But yeah, we just kept it very quiet and I have got, the coffee with the ladies on Saturday, so that'll be nice. And uh, I will tell you that last Sunday, uh, was that Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Uh, Friday, Susan contacted me to see if I would like to go and see Fiona at the Yarn Bowl. So we did go and do that, which was a lovely, lovely morning. And I might have something to show in the For Me, From Me section there. So there's that. Dobby's going to send you off all of those that don't stay for the for me from me with a little bark so all right uh thanks for joining me and i'll see you in two weeks don't forget to have a go at the watercolor tutorial at the end of the video and for the rest of us let's go and see what i've bought for me from me what have i been spending my money on all right, so I've got a few bits here to show you. Uh, first up, I'll show you, I had an ad come on up on Instagram and I rarely buy anything off Instagram. My husband got caught out with that a long time ago. He bought something and then they just kept deducting money out of the 
the, the people just kept deducting money out of the visa, which was a bit of a pain to sort out. So we did get that sorted out, but I'm reluctant to buy things. If I see something that's suggested as a ad on Instagram and I fancy it, I will write down the website, go out of it, uh, Instagram, and go to the actual website and order it, which I've done that before, but I don't like to order directly off Instagram. But I did in this instance, I bought this fabric. Uh, it came up as a suggestion and I went and got it because I loved it. I thought it was very retro. That's got some cute little things on it. I got uh, a meter and it's I got the canvas base. And some of the things it says are, never make the same mistake twice. There are so many new ones to try. Try a different one, try a different one each day. And that one says, note to self, it's illegal to stab idiots. <laughs> so there's a few things like that on it. And the reason that I got it is it is a bit retro. Uh, I thought that uh, I like to make a bag for Mill's partner Beck at Christmas time, so I thought she would see the humour in that and um, she might like a bag and there's plenty of fabric there, so I might make one for myself as well. So bought that. And then, as I said, we I went to the Yarn Bowl with Susan, which if you haven't been to Fiona's shop in Banyo, this, that, that's in Queensland, you should stop by there. It's a beautiful shop. She's got it so well set up. There's a little room where you can buy all sorts of knitting and crochet books. She's got uh, a room set up that is devoted to uh, the cotton yarns, the uh, little tea and coffee area, uh, beautiful comfy chairs to sit in, a huge array of, fabric, of, of yarns from all sorts of indie dyers. So we had a lovely morning there. There was a lovely group of ladies there from Itswitch and they are a spinning and weaving group and they were doing a yarn trawl going around to all the yarn shops and Susan and I were pretty keen to follow them but we didn't. We went and had toasted sandwiches instead. But we had a lovely chat with them so if any of you ladies are watching this episode, uh, hello and welcome. And uh, it was nice to see you guys there. So there was that. And I bought a couple of things. I bought some of the beautiful indie dyed yarn. And this is 100% cotton. And this is for Mill because she likes to crochet in cotton. It's a denim blue with all these pops of bright colour. Really nice. And Fiona skeined it up for me. So that was handy. And this is the dyer. The colour is called Summer. It's a four ply, Summer Night, it's called a four ply, and it is 100% cotton. And the dyer is VK Yarns, colourful hand dyed cotton. So that's the, um, the dyer there. So, yep got that for Mill and I'll put that in with her jumper that I'm going to post down so she'll be pretty happy to get that and I bought two balls of this Fiberscape Cumulus in this lovely it's like a plummy colour but when you um, look at the strands on it I don't know if it'll show up on the camera they almost have like a greenish petrol hue to them. I thought it looked really interesting. Um, it's soft. The makeup of it is 75% Suri baby Suri alpaca and 26% mulberry silk. And I thought to myself, I might design a wrap or a shawl with that. Um, knitting it up as a lace way and then in a different section I wanted to get a, a contrasting yarn that I thought went well with this and Susan and I looked at a few in the shop and I decided 
to hold off. And when I got home, I found this in my stash, which I've dyed. I'll take the band off so you can see the colour. So I've dyed this one up uh, a little while ago and I liked the colours in it and I thought that that would look quite good together. I don't plan on holding them together to knit it. I plan on doing a lace section in this and then a different section in this yarn. So I think the different weights will bounce off each other well and the different colours, so you've got the light and the dark, I think that um, could be interesting. So that's jumping around in my brain. So they're the two things I bought at Fiona's Lovely Shop. And as I say, go and have a look. It's a very beautiful shop. And then I was on Etsy, as I always am, and I went to leave a review uh, for the, the, short, the scarf that I made a few episodes, the silk scarf that I naturally dyed that I got from Bombed Yarns. And I was just having a look to see what else she had in her shop. And I noticed that new into her shop, she had these. And they're a little wooden sheep and you can buy just these on their own or you can buy them with a pattern to make a little jumper for them. So I bought one with the pattern because I didn't really need three patterns and I bought three of the sheep. So I thought what I might do is I might knit a jumper for one of these sheep for myself I'm going to put one in my giveaway pile and I've got one as a present for somebody that I'm, I'm thinking of. So, yeah, I picked those up and I can't remember. They weren't expensive. Uh, I think these were like $6 or something and I think with the pattern, I think they were $12. It definitely was not an expensive purchase. So I thought that was a bit of fun got those and you know how when you're on Etsy it comes up and says if you've liked a store and if somebody's put something new in it, it says they've put something new in it well I bought a few bits from this lady a while ago and it came up that she had a new thing in her shop and I had to go and have a look and I did buy one for myself she made the I'll just show you her card first of all so her Etsy shop is Vera Lulu handmade. Something handmade is so much more meaningful, and that is true. So that's her card. And she makes a lot of handmade things, and she had these, and they were, I think, ridiculously cheap for what they are. So I bought myself this one, little foxy. And I bought this one because this little fox is called Ruby. And for those of you that have been watching for a while, you know that I used to have a little dog that I loved so much and her name was Ruby. So I had to get Ruby. And it came nicely packaged. It's got little the little um, fairy thing, a little handmade with love, the little timber heart. Just the details in it are beautiful. On the back, it's got a little piece of rope so that you can hang it up. And as I said, because they seemed so reasonably priced, I thought I would get one for my sister as well because she makes me lots of delicious jams and chutneys and things like that. So I got this one for my sister with the red pants on. And this one's name is Molly. So again, she's got a little hang hang tab on it. Beautiful fabric, like rusticy kind of fabric. I don't know why, but that that fabric that she's used around the for the scarf reminds me of a blanket that we used to have as kids. But these are all handmade, and I they were not expensive. Uh, so yeah, did buy two of those. Put ones for a present, so that's okay. 
They came in these nice little boxes too with a little postage stamp sticker on the side and a little nest of little nest for them to sleep in so they're all comfy on their trip. And then any of you that were watching a couple of weeks ago on Instagram, Mel and I did a craft afternoon uh, a couple of Fridays ago, which was a bit of an epic fail because uh, we both had trouble with the felting that we were trying to do. Uh, my needle punch embroidery tool was broken when I took it out of the packet. So it was a bit nightmarish. Well, since then, Mel has mastered, well, she's in the process of mastering the felting. So that's going quite well. And I decided to buy myself a new uh, tool for the needle punch. And I noticed that the needle punch that tool that I had bought was quite big, designed for really chunky yarn. And my plan in my mind was to use some of my four ply to uh, do the needle punch. So I did a bit of research and I found out that I needed a much smaller tool. So I bought this little kit off, it's much smaller than I thought it was going to be, off Etsy. And it's got three needles in it. I've already put one needle in the tool just to see how it goes. So you get this tool. It's got the little screw thing on the side there, which you can unscrew and change to use the different uh, needle heads. So the needle head that I've got in is for the four ply. And my plan is to have a go at that over the next two weeks and see if I can't come up with something that resembles a half decent needle punch. Uh, as I said, much it's much, much smaller than the one that I originally had. Uh, so, yeah, I'm interested to see how that goes. So there's that. And another thing that I've purchased, and this is in preparation for knitting the Beagle, which I know I've been talking about for weeks, for episodes now, but it's going to happen at some point. So I did order some eyes. Uh, and I wasn't sure what colour brown to get, so I thought, well, if they're coming, I'll order two sets. So I, I bought like a, a darker brown and a lighter brown. I mean, they're both nice. So there's enough to do. That There's four sets in there. So they're the dark ones and they're the light ones. I got these off Etsy. Garani Supplies. They have taken a while to come. I think I've they came from the US. So they did take a little, and they did send me a note to say that they would take a while to come. But they're 18 millimeter um, eyes. So there's those ones. But I noticed in the store they had these, I don't know if you'll be able to see these that well, but it's a bracket that you put around the eye before you put it in. And it gives the eye an eyelid. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. They're cute. I will try them out too. So when you, before you put your eye in, you put, put it in there. So it's got an eyelid. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. I plan on using those. Bought the corresponding size. So I did purchase those. And then I was on Booktopia and I saw that they had, I, I saw, uh, a long time ago, Ollie and Bella. I don't know if any of you follow her. She's in the UK. I don't watch all her podcasts. She does a lot of vlogs as well. She covers a lot of things like cooking and gardening and uh, she does yeah, uh, um, project bags and knitting and things like that. So, But she showed a book similar to this, if not this one, a while ago. And I saw it on Booktopia, so I decided to pick it up. And it's a thicker book, as you can see, but it is full of stickers. Beautiful stickers. These are some panels. Like the whole panel, you could take the whole panel, you could cut it up, you could use it as a background. Then it has sections of, here's one with birds and butterflies and there's a big cat and like vintage looking I would say and there's a rose all sorts of things every page and you've got 
alphabet at the back. So it goes through the whole alphabet. Each page has got different um, letters on it with different pictures and different fonts. Let me see if I can find... Okay. Oh, look at that. Look at that J. That J there is actually like a little, a little dog sitting up. But I thought these might be handy in my, my scrapbook and my journaling. So yeah, there's some really, there's, there's a, I don't know, warning, spider alert, big spider on that page, bugs, all sorts of things in this book. Every single page has got something different. So, but they all sort of have that vintagey feel to them. So, yeah, it, this, this also was not overly expensive. I think it was around the $20 mark. So I think that's a lot of stickers for that price. And it's a nice, it says over a thousand. Over a thousand exquisite Victorian stickers. Peel and decorate or browse and feast on the beauty of this lush sticker book unlike any other. So, yeah. I thought that was a nice book, so I grabbed that. And then last week, you know, I was talking to you guys about my daily journal. I haven't shown it to you this time. I'm trying to keep this episode a little bit shorter because it has got the tutorial on the end of it. Um, but I did come across this book, which I thought for some of you might be handy. Draw Every Little Thing. And it's a also a nice book and it goes through uh, different things that you can draw it's step-by-step -step instructions on how to draw just everyday items so that's a clothing page uh, at the back there's a um, pencil case like where is it what's on your desk there's a section there office supplies so they show you what what's in it and then they go through step by step how to draw them if you want to use some drawings in your journaling but you're not that flash with drawing so this this section is around town little houses and cats and bikes ducks and flowers park yeah so i uh, i like these kinds of books and there's an example on how it goes through step by step on how to draw the bicycle. Yeah. And yeah, so I thought if any of you were trying to do the journaling but struggling a little bit with the drawing side of it, you might be interested in a book like this. So I will link all the details below. I'm just having a look around. I'm pretty sure that's everything. The dogs have only barked twice. The sun has stayed out. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So I'm going to go and have some lunch now. I'm pretty hungry. And uh, I'm looking forward to a nice quiet afternoon. I'm thinking about going and putting my feet up for a little while and knitting on the advent, the secret advent. So there's something to look forward to. Uh, I, I know we're going to be doing the cast on together on Saturday. But those of you that have lit, knit the love note know that it, you've got to do a, um, you know, the the crochet cable cast on at the neck. So I think I'll set that up before Saturday so that when I'm sitting there with the ladies, I don't have to concentrate too much. I can just start knitting. So I might even just set that up this afternoon. So, yep, got a few things on and that's about it. So I hope you're all having a lovely time. I hope you're all well and safe. And I want to thank all those people that uh, had a chat with me on the last episode. And in particular, there were two ladies from the UK that reached out to me to say that they were starting to follow me. And one of those ladies, I will put her YouTube channel here on the screen. She actually gave my Friends are like flowers, shawl, pattern, a shout out. 
So I've watched a couple of their episodes, so you might want to check them out, but I will link them in the show notes. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to stick around for the watercolour tutorial and have a go at that, and let me know how you go. I'll see you in two weeks. Okay, so today we are going to have a go at painting roses as per uh, a viewer request. And so I will tell you straight up that these take a little bit of practice, definitely an easy flower to paint, but you just need to have a little bit of practice. And I've been practicing this week so that I've got something to show you guys. And this is what I've painted and created. And these are the roses that we're going to be having a go at. And as you can see, they are circular. They've got a darker center going out to a lighter edge. And you can really paint them whatever you like. As you can see, I've got some pinks, peaches, some reds and oranges some pinks down here, just whatever you like. I've painted some on the back as well. So let's get started and see how we go with this. I've selected uh, three brushes, uh, two brushes, sorry. I've got a Princeton Elite size eight, but if you've got a brush that has a point on it that comes to a tip like that, that will be handy. I've also selected a very fine tipped brush. We might not use that. I'll see, we'll see how we go. I've just got it out just in case. And of course, a pen. Uh, I'm using a waterproof pen today, and this is in the size 0 0.5. So that's our tools today. Now, my plan is to basically cover this with roses and leaves, and then you can do whatever you like. You can turn it into a card. As I've said to you earlier, I've made mine. I just folded it in half, glued it together, and embellished it a little bit as a bookmark. So you can do whatever you like there. I've got my paper all prepped ready to go. And I'll just move that so it's not casting a shadow onto the page. So you've got a clear view. So I'm going to go ahead and dip my brush into the water and get a little bit of paint on the tip of my brush. I'm going to go for a pink. And straight off, I'm going to put one in the middle so that you can see clearly what I'm doing. So I'm just going to do a dot and that dot is quite wet and has a domed appearance and then just draw a little circle it does not have to be perfect doesn't even have to join around the edge like so I'll just zoom in so that you can see that that's what we're looking at there then dip your brush in the water and get rid of most of the nearly all the paint uh, and just have a little bit on of water and just the residue of paint on your brush. Now to create these roses what you're looking at doing is a elongated backward and front facing C like this section here. You want to create it so it doesn't have too much uniformity like you want to Position your C's at different angles. So I'm going to try and hold my brush back so you can see what I'm doing. So put your brush on the page, the tip, lay it down, 
and bring it around and bring it up to a little point. Then taking it about a third, going around the other way and just touching slightly in that center section. If you need a little bit more paint, dip into your dome, going for another one. little bit more water to make it fade out a bit more another C and then just keep going around with your C's like that leaving a little bit of white space you can see I've left a little bit of white space here and there put another one there just touching ever so slightly onto the previous one that you've done but what you want to avoid is too many C's. I've got one starting and finishing there. So try not to have too much of that. And you'll get a more natural looking rose. So that it's sort of splaying out. You can make them as big or as small as you like. Then dipping your brush in the water. Just touch that. and You touch your little dome and bleed it out a little bit into the rose. And that's the first one done. So let's let that one dry. I'll go ahead and we'll do another one. So I'm going to choose a slightly deeper pink and put another one over here. So following the same method, you want a dot. Just do a little circle around the edge. Rinse your brush off and get nearly all the paint off it so you've got mainly water on your brush and then start with your C's again so dragging around and around that way just overlapping slightly as long as you've got your C's happening and a little bit of white I mean as you can see I've just put that one there it's not perfect but it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things just keep going and you will see your flower starts to form a bit more water I'll just pan it back out a bit again so that uh, you're getting the full screen there dipping your brush into the center there and bleed it out you can make them all different sizes I'll go for a a purple one this time so you can see a little bit of contrast doing your dot in the center now don't be discouraged if you don't get this straight away I can tell you that I haven't painted too many roses and when I started painting them at the beginning of this week I thought I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you guys how to do this because they weren't really working out so do not feel discouraged just keep practicing and you'll finally see that they come together so as you can see I've created my little center area there what you can do too if you want is touch that at the beginning and just drag it around I made this one slightly darker so that you can see it I mean that looks like a hot mess right now but just keep going and it'll come together as long as you've got some nice thin little little lines like that one there and some white space and you're basically just going around and just keep going and you'll see your flower forming there we go it's another one so I'm going to keep going practicing here and filling up my page I'm going to do a couple of orangey red flowers with a bit of yellow that's another thing that I was doing earlier uh, in the week was making the center an orangish color then rinsing my brush out and lightly touching it into a yellow so I had a bit of yellow on my brush and it gives you that rose that has the yellow with the hint of of the red to it 
So you're getting your C's going. Just keep going around and around. Of course, the bigger the brush, the bigger the rows. The smaller the rush, the brush, the smaller the rows. So if you want smaller roses, just choose a smaller brush. But just keep going around until you're happy with how it looks. And move on to your next one. And like you can go in and just, if you want a bit more in there. There's no rules here. You do what you like. All right, so I'm going to keep going. I'll fill up that page. Um, and when that's done and they're dry, I'll be back. Okay, so we've got those all painted in. And the next thing that I like to do is just dipping into a little bit of brown, any kind of brown that you've got, and just doing a few little dots in the centre to indicate the centre of the flower. So just get those in. Gives the, I think it gives the centre a bit of depth. If it blends a little bit, doesn't matter. I like to just tap it in to give that indication of the centre. Just helps it along a little bit. So we'll just get those all painted in. And like I said, these are a little bit trickier to do, but um, definitely worth it. Like they do turn out really nicely in the end. And I think that um, they make nice little gifts, gift cards and bookmarks and things like that. So at the end of the day, it's supposed to be fun. So don't get stressed. If they're not working out, don't worry. It's no big deal. And make that one a bit dark. I'll just light that up a bit. Okay, so I've got all my little centre bits in. And the other thing that I like to do is put some leaves in. I think that always brings it to life too. So I've just got uh, some green here. It's just a standard green. So I've just put a bit of that and some water on my brush. And to do the leaves, uh, just find a little white space in between. Tip of your brush down and up. So you're just making a little tip down and to the point and I think that that always helps you can put them randomly wherever you like you can put more than one or in one spot I'd wait until your flowers are dry before you start putting the green in or the, otherwise it will um, run into your flowers and kind of distort them a little bit so just be a little bit patient and wait for those flowers to dry so I'm just randomly putting them here and there and as you can see like once you put a bit of green with some of these colors it really I think it really looks good and you'll be able to see as well that what I've done is I've run some of the flowers right over to the edge of the paper so that um, you'll have that little edge when you when you peel your paper off but I think they look really pretty I've really enjoyed uh, painting them this week I did I will admit I did find them a little bit frustrating in the beginning but I grew to love them actually <laughs> quite liked making them we will do something else next time. I think we'll do flowers again next time. But, um, yeah. I think that they're really nice. And as you get a little bit better, you can go into a little bit more detail. I have really tried to simplify these as much as I can because I want uh, you to be successful painting them and I think this is a good 
starting point. Like I said, if you're feeling really confident, that's Dobby barking in the background, so just ignore that. Um, you can do two-toned ones like I did there with the orange and then fade it out to the yellow. Uh, yeah, or like you could even do a pink one, a purple one, fading out to a pinkish colored one. Whatever you like. So I'll just put a couple more leaves in and I'll probably be done with that. It's hard to know when to stop sometimes. Put another one in there. Like I said, the leaves are just put your tip down, lay your belly down on the brush so that it goes wide and back up to the tip. But they don't have to be perfect. This is about the roses. So then what I like to do is a bit of splatter. So just get, I'm going in for a bit of a brownish red, bit of red. I like um, the splatter on the roses because I think that it makes it look really authentically watercolour. <laughs> and bearing in mind, when you are painting in watercolour, that the paint colours do fade by about 20 to 30 percent so uh, if it looks a bit dark to you when you first lay paint down don't panic at all okay love a bit of splatter I've gone with the pink splatter actually I, I dipped into brown I'll do a little bit of brown there we go that should do it now I'm going to wait for that to dry and then we've got one last little thing to do with our pen. So I'll be back in a second. That'll only take a minute to dry and I'll be back and we will finish the last little bit of these beautiful roses. Okay, and we're back for this last little bit. So the last thing I like to do is using my pen and I think I told you guys that this was a 0 0.5. It's actually a 0 0.05. So it's a very fine tip. Now, what I like to do is just run a few stamens out of the middle of each rose and just put a little dot at the tip of them. And I just think that that gives it a, another dimension if you do that makes it just look a little bit more detailed so I'm just running usually an odd number not that I actually count them but and then I just do a little squiggle underneath it three four five and then dot 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 and you can play around with these however you like to get them to look the way that you want them to but once you've got the basics in place you can make them your own there are a lot of YouTube tutorials on how to paint roses so if you have found this unhelpful <laughs> hopefully not but if you have um, just Google easy watercolor roses and there are so many people doing them and I will say that they are all using basically the principle that I've just shown you uh, with varying degrees of difficulty so if you pick this up really quickly and you're like that was easy I don't know what she's talking about that's fine and you want to take it to the next level just google it and you can go in as as difficult or as easy as you like but I think as a just a little quick and easy exercise uh, that this is this is quite good and I I'm hoping that I have simplified it enough to make it so that you can achieve something that you're happy with but 
like I've said to you all along, guys, it's art. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not supposed to be perfect. And remember this. You can always see the things that you've done wrong. Other people can't see it. Trust me. <laughs> From years of experience and being critical of my own work, people cannot see the things that you can see in your own work. So be satisfied with what you create and I think you'll be happy with it. So that's all my little flowers done. And as you can see, I've just really quickly put those middles in. Let's see if I can get this off. As I said, lately I've been having a few problems with my tape, but no, we're looking good here today. Peel that off. And I think when you peel this off and you've got that nice crisp edge, I always think that makes it look a little bit more professional too. I think that takes it to another level. So get your tape off. And there we go all finished i think that it's nice if you can use a variance of colors as as you can see in the overall scheme of it a nice little pop of red and the yellows and the pinks i think it just makes it look fresh and very even though we're heading into winter here in australia very spring-like and as always guys do not forget to sign and date your work what am I looking at here? I'm looking at the 25th of May, 25th of the 5th, 21. All right, good luck. I hope you have a go at this. I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please let me know how you go and if you think this tutorial was helpful. If you've got any other requests, just let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.